Next question is from Body by HK. What do you think of trainers using unstable surfaces to train compound movements? For example, barbell back squat or on wobble pillows or a BOSU ball. So when <laughs> when these unstable surfaces, Ooh. I remember specifically, because I've been in fitness long enough to, to remember these being introduced into, into fitness. So when I first started working as a trainer, you didn't see any of this stuff at all. You didn't even see a physio ball. It just didn't exist. <laughs> yeah, in this gym. exploded after uh, you know certain certifications were promoting it. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, they came into the scene, and they didn't just come into the scene. They took over. And, yeah. and then, it, then it was like every exercise on an unstable surface because it makes every exercise more effective. So they went too far in the other direction. Now, I think we're a little bit more balanced. Do unstable surfaces provide value? They do. There's some value for sure. Um, they could teach you. They slow your form down. They could teach you to activate your core and your posture. Mm -hmm. um, it's, of course, a different type of movement, so recruits muscles differently. It does improve balance uh, specifically on when you're standing on unstable surfaces because it's pretty specific. So I see value, but I don't. the value is specific. In other words, it doesn't replace the value of doing heavy, no. both feet on the flat floor. This comp. is the very bottom of the pyramid. This mm. is this is what you build upon. Like, I, if there's issues with stability, then there's massive value in introducing unstable surfaces in order to regain that and feel, uh, you know, how you need to recruit to be able to stabilize properly. Uh, but uh, I mean, for the most part, I, I would use this with clients with body weight, and uh, you know, if I'm really trying to to specifically address an issue like that's where I, I find a lot of value in that adding load to it you're gonna have to make a good argument for me to really accept that that's you know something that's a value uh for the person well i also want to caution you uh to falling for into this trap of and i and i feel like this is really common in the the trainer space we get a look we read uh, a few books we get some national certifications we, we come fresh out of college so we have some knowledge and, and then we see things and we like to pick it apart and mm -hmm. critique what, you know, Jane is doing over there with her trainer. Like, oh my God, scoff at it. I can't believe they're training on that. that and that's so stupid. And that makes no sense. And here's the thing, like, uh, you don't know what that person is training for specifically. And there, there is a, an application for almost any weird kind of thing that we've seen before. And I've learned now to not judge when I see stuff like that, because I don't, I'm not in the trainer's head. Like I don't know what their desired outcome of of that is. I think uh, Sal nailed it that it's very specific, but you don't know that person could be what that specific thing mm -hmm. is for, and that that might be related to what they're trying to accomplish. And you know, I've done enough weird things for clients that I'm sure somebody looked at me and judged, but they have no idea what I'm trying to do. You know, uh, Phil Daru made that comment when we were we were just interviewing him recently when he gets people that are all these coaches and they're critiquing. It's like, you don't know my athlete. Mm -hmm. You don't know them the way I know them. I've seen them move and I've seen them compete for the last three years and there's very little specific things I'm trying to get them. And maybe this thing translates into that, mm -hmm. even though for general population and muscle building and strength, this looks ridiculous. It mm -hmm. looks stupid. It doesn't make sense. But because I have a very specific goal in mind that I or, or desired outcome with this person. Uh, I do want to train that. So just be careful if you're a coach and a trainer and you're asking questions like this or you're judging other trainers that are doing that because you don't know these things. Don't fall in that trap of yeah. assuming that you do. I had a uh, um, a surfer and a skateboarder and and I would train them. And so this was one of those things they were trying to improve their. Uh, the way that they react and, and stabilize and balance like quickly. So there was some weird elements involved with mm -hmm. that too. So to your point, uh, you know, and specificity was definitely uh, the reason for that. So yeah, you know, there are instances out there for sure. Yeah, my, my favorite tool of all the unsta unstable tools is just a physio ball. A uh, physio ball is the, is, is the most useful in my opinion generally speaking. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of value in using the physio ball for, for certain people. I mean, our, our MAP starter program uses quite a bit of the physio ball and it's I mean that's this is how you want to start working out to teaches you proper form gets you to activate properly stabilize properly and then progressing from there to more traditional lifts I mean it's a great transition I mean I would take it a step further and even say unilateral training I mean that's great stability if you're doing one arm one leg anything uh, the stability that you get just from doing unilateral training is sure. phenomenal so you don't even necessarily need to take it to having tools like to me that's 
even more, uh, regressing it even further back is just getting to the place where you can do use every limb independently by itself and stabilize the major joints. That right there in itself is a great place. Mm-hmm. But again, we don't know uh, what the trainer is, what their desired outcome, what their potential sport is or goal of the client. So be careful.